back, everybody. You know, it's been a while since I've gone uh, and done a live stream. And the reason that I'm doing this today is it's been a while since I had the creative energy to make something new that I'm really excited about, but I actually have finally done that. And it's called STEM Improv. And I've been getting a few questions about it. I just wanted to have a place to direct people so they could kind of see what everything is about. And so I'm actually going to... Um, keep myself on track because I want this video to be between like five and 10 minutes. And I'm going to go through the what and why of STEM improv, the prep, which is like spoiler alert, there is none, which is something I'm very excited about for this resource. I'm going to show you some examples from in the wild and show you how to use it. And then I know this is covered up on the agenda right now, uh, but I'm going to show you how to get set one of this resource for free if you're watching this before the end of April 2022. Okay, so I'm going to start by the why or the what, excuse me. So you see those little wheels up on the agenda, the design A made of that. This is at the heart of the resource. So they're going to design an object made primarily of one material that has some sort of function. And I'm going to actually show you, I recorded about a three minute video that is full of examples are not examples, excuse me, it is the basically the directions or the introduction of the activity for students. So you don't even have to do that. You can just use this as sub plans if you wanted. You wouldn't even have to be there because the introduction is prepared for you. And I think it'll be a good introduction for you too. But before I show you that video, I wanted to give you a little bit of the why behind why I made this resource. And there are, there are whys for you as a teacher and whys for students. So the whys for you is I wanted something that could be done quick um quickly because i know a lot of you have very short periods of time i i wanted you to have something that was no prep because that's always helpful something that would be worthwhile though right so a lot of times our short activities aren't always a lot of bang for the buck so i wanted it to feel like something you'd feel good to use in your classroom i wanted it to be versatile i wanted it to be something that works whether your kids are in person or remote whether you've got everybody here today or some of them are spread out or hybrid. So that's the why behind why this resource was made for you. For students, I was looking for something that could help them develop and tap into their creativity and imagination. This is something I hear from teachers all the time that they aren't sure how to like encourage their kids to be creative. Like how do you tell, you can't tell someone to be creative, <laughs> doesn't usually work. So how do you practice that? I wanted the students also to have something where they could think through design obstacles and practice that moment of having brain freeze and then what can they do to get unfrozen or unstuck and move on to the next thing. So that's kind of behind everything um, about this resource. So let me show you, um, I'm going to take this part off. Uh, I want to show you the three minute intro video because this is what you would show students and I think it's going to give you the best idea of what this resource is about. So here we go. Welcome to STEM Improv. Improv is short for improvisation, which is when you do or create something that you haven't planned beforehand. Many musicians, comedians, and actors use improv exercises to get their creativity flowing and open their mind to new and unexpected ideas. The real focus of improv is to practice creating something without judging your ideas too much as you come up with them. So remember that, practice creating without judgment. Here's how it works. In this STEM improv exercise, you're going to randomly select an object, a main material, and a function using either a spinner or printed cards. From there, you'll create an improvised design plan using the planning pages or slides provided. In the open space, you can use drawings, written descriptions, or a combination of the two to explore and express your ideas. Keep in mind the material you select will be your primary building material. You may supplement or adapt the material in your plans, but the main material should remain the main material. A couple of things to know. Most of the time, this activity is thinking through ideas and potential problems and creating a plan. You most likely won't actually build prototypes for these designs, so you can really let your imagination run wild. You may get a combination of object, material, and function that makes sense or gives you an immediate picture in your head of what to do, but probably more often, you'll get a combination that seems too strange or maybe even impossible to work with. If you're having trouble coming up with ideas, don't panic. 
Brain freeze is completely normal, especially when we're challenging our imagination as much as we will be in this exercise. So if you feel like you don't have any good ideas, here are a couple of things that help me when I get stuck. Try focusing on just two of your categories to start. For example, focus on just the object and material at first, or the object and function to see what comes to mind. Once you unlock the first step, then you can try adding your missing category back into your design ideas. If you're stuck on why something can't work, try starting with the handout questions before your design. This allows you to really define the problem clearly, which may help you get unstuck. For example, if your material is giving you trouble and seems impossible to work with, why is that? What would you like to use instead? How might you adapt or manipulate the material you did choose to behave more like the one you'd want to have? Another thing to try is to ask yourself, but what if it could work? What if this was a science fiction movie or a fairy tale? How might this design look in a fantasy world or in a cartoon? Take the pressure off. Let this be fun. Explore silly, wacky, and impractical ideas. Let your brain live and breathe in a fictional space while you create. Step improv is not always going to result in a realistic or workable design, and that's okay. We're here to practice getting into the flow of an open mind, imagination, and creativity, and to learn to be the boss of our own brains. That can all be really hard to do, which is why it takes practice. Practice makes progress. So what are you waiting for? Let's get to it. It's your turn to try STEM improv. All right. So that is our little intro video. And this is what it basically looks like. So I have for you, hold on one second. Let me turn this little thing off here. Um, I have two versions of it. So there's a print version and there is a version that's in Google Slides so that you can use whichever you like. But it basically has that video I just showed you. You can see that in the thumbnail up here. Um, and then the student handouts, well, handouts if you print them, but um, they can type it right in there. And then they have the video spinner wheel for the object, the materials, and the functions. And there are eight on each wheel plus a ninth free choice. So if they get free choice, they can choose anything from the wheel. Or if you want them to choose like anything in the world, they could do that too. Um, and I just did also want to point out that on the materials spinner, I also added pictures of the actual materials that are here. So just to make sure that there wasn't any confusion. So if I said foil takeout containers, for example, they might not know exactly what I mean by that. And so there is a visual here, but I only did on the materials for a reason. I don't want to stunt their creativity by showing them objects or showing them functions. And you might've noticed by looking at these pictures here that I have chosen quite a few um, unconventional resources or materials and I've done that on purpose because I want it to be really challenging and sort of unusual. And because as you saw in the directions, most of the time they're not going to be building these. These are This is just the, the impetus of getting an idea and starting to create a design and working through some of the design um, uh, obstacles, challenges, things that you think will work well that won't. Um, and then there are a couple of things, other things here um, for students as well to work on troubleshooting and things like that. So that's what it looks like. And then of course, there's the print version. So if you were using the print version, there are all those cards uh, or the wheels, I'm sorry, they would be cards that are printable and you could like shuffle them and or like put them in a bag and pull them out of a hat and things like that. Um, I wanted to show you some examples from in the wild. And before I do this, this actually this note, I got this in my inbox on Friday from Rachel. She just tried using this with her fourth grade classes. And for me, it just like made my day that they asked to do it again. And can they have a set of cards to take home and do it at home on their free time, which to me is like, how can you ask for anything more? Right. Uh, so here are a couple of different examples. I'm going to think I'm going to take my camera out of this in a second so you can see well. Um, and not be distracted by that. So my camera stopped, my audio should still be on. Okay, so this is an example where um, someone spun a fashion item made primarily of socks that catches fish. And so this person designed a fishing purse. Um, this came from Rachel's class, um, table four, they worked collaboratively, but you can have your students work on this um, in as an individual too. Like I said, I wanted it to be versatile. So this is a chair made primarily of bread that catches fish. I tried to make it a little bit bigger um, for you to see. I lost some of the resolution on it, but you get the idea, right? You can kind of see um, some of their ideas and their sketches and their labels. Um, here's another one that's a picnic pack. This is a backpack 
made primarily of plastic bags that keeps something Mm, I can't even read the right. I think it's new. Uh, this might be from the second set or the third set. Um, and this is headwear made primarily of chains that has extra storage. And this person designed um, chains that get smaller as you go upward. And there is fabric wrapped around the rings where you could do, uh, store some extra things. Uh, so this, I've just, I don't even need to have that piece. I'm going to come right back in here, start my camera again. Um, and take this piece out. Perfect. And I want to make sure that I cover, um, let me check it right in here, cover a couple of little things. So as I said earlier, this is a perfect thing. It only takes 10 minutes if you just do the design and the two handouts. But inside the resource, I give you ideas if you want to extend that out, if you want to take 20 minutes or 30 if you do want to build prototypes, you can do that. Um, I just don't think of it as being a requirement because I do want this to be something that's simple, that's no prep, that gives us the opportunity to use really unusual materials in our imagined designs. So it's not something I would want you to feel like you had to have on hand. Uh, what I did suggest to a teacher last week who asked me, well, what, what if they want to build prototypes? Like what would you, what kind of materials do I need? And in this case, because I've used so many unconventional materials, I would suggest having them use stand-ins that act similarly. So in the case of socks, you know, that first one that said uh, that was a fishing purse um, and it was made out of socks, maybe you have fabric scraps, but even if you didn't, you probably have paper towels and they could sort of, you know, use those as stand-ins or even paper and sort of cut it into the shape or wrinkle it up to kind of like make it more soft and pliable and fabric-like. And that to me is a great thing to have your students think about have them do the heavy lifting of figuring out the properties and the characteristics and what materials you actually do have on hand that you can use that act, would act similarly to make your prototype, if that makes sense. Um, all of these, because they have eight um, options on the object, the material and the function wheel, each individual set has three, 336 possible combinations, which is pretty awesome. Um, and there's some more on extensions and troubleshooting when you um, would look into the resource. So the thing I promised I would tell you before the end is that if you are watching this before the end of April in 2022, there is a way to grab set one for free. And that is when you register for uh, elementary STEM con and beyond. So I have my little friend right there. Uh, using the link that you see below, it's also in the description. You can click on it, but it's bit.ly uh, slash stemcon22, all lowercase. The one that's in the description is not a bit.ly link, um, but you'll see it and you can register if you are interested in picking it up. And if you're watching this later, sometime down the line, and you have questions, please let me know. Uh, I will keep you know my notifications on for this post, so I will see them as they go through. I will say one other thing you can do to extend, and there are some other ideas, like I said, in the resource, have them do them, make the prototypes, have them advertise as though this invention is like coming to market uh, or have them create reviews for each other that are like real reviews, like on Yelp or something like that, as though they've purchased the, the invention from their peer. But I think that this is a wonderful way to help students have that repetition of the practice of coming up with ideas and just know that and, and try to communicate this with them too, that some of the ideas are going to be like knock it out of the park, outstanding or funny or hilarious or silly or outlandish. Uh, and then some of them are just going to be flops. And that's that's the nature of creativity and coming up with ideas. You have to generate a lot of ideas. Some of them will be great. Many of them won't, but it's about the practice. The focus is not really on the thing that they design or create. It's on the practice of creation, if that makes sense. Um, and Jennifer just had a comment. I didn't think about using it, uh, only using it to plan. You can absolutely, like I said, pull it out and make it um, a longer activity. But it, this can be a standalone planning activity where you're really focusing in. Uh, so one of the things that in my STEMCon presentation this year, my STEMCon presentation is all about you only have 30 minutes for STEM. So what can you do in that time period? So I wanted to find some things that were short that you could do that you could feel good about. And one of the ways that I do that is looking at not always doing the full engineering design process. This is not meant to replace that. That's important. You need to have that. But having some times where you could really focus in on discrete skills that you want to build and develop and, and nourish, right? And so creativity and imagination is one of those things, right? So if we can focus in on, you know, 10 minutes doing this 
you know, somewhat often you could do it on choice boards, lots of different op opportunities to use this. Then we get them sort of flexing that muscle, right, of coming up with an idea, not judging it too much. And so then we can see how that will transfer into when we do a full design challenge. Hopefully they won't get stuck as often, right? They will hopefully will be used to the idea of just like let your imagination flow free and run wild, if that makes sense. Um, Jennifer said, yes, so you have 35 minute period. So I hope you're coming to STEMCon because I'm going to have some good ideas for you. This is one of them. Um, and we will talk a little bit more about that at STEMCon, but there will be others in that session as well, because I know this is a really common problem that a lot of people are having, especially if you're an elective teacher, that you're set up with these class periods that are, you know, sometimes even under 30 minutes. So that's one of the reasons I do really like this one is you can keep it down to 10 uh, and you can expand it out to, you know, 30 or even more if you wanted to, but you don't have to. Um, I'm seeing another one. Yes. Okay. I saw the materials and have so many students. I didn't think I'd be able to get enough supplies that were listed. Yes, you don't have to. You're only using it, only using it for planning. If you want to do the prototypes, like I said, have your kids say, you know, if the materials said socks, like I, I gave that example already, if they say marbles, okay, well, you know, maybe you have marbles, but you don't have them for all your kids. So, you know, have them crumple up like little marble sized scratch paper that was already just maybe going to be recycled or put in the trash and can be later down the line as well. So I don't want to break the bank. I wanted this to be super practical, no prep, super easy things you could leave for a sub if you're going to be out, because I know we're, we're all facing, you know, a, a lot of different challenges in school right now. Um, okay. I'm saying, yay. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Third year to STEM con. Awesome. And if you um, did already, you, I think you said, Jennifer, you already uh, registered and you uh, registered under a different link. No worries. I'm still going to give one of the sets. I'm going to give a different set. So I gave step set one to the people who registered using my link and, um, and then even if you didn't register using my link, I'm going to get a give a different set. I don't know if it'll be two or three or one that I haven't even posted yet, uh, but everybody will get an, a set as part of my session as well. So know that that's coming. <laughs> I love that. Oh, no, you did get this one. I misunderstood. So you're going to get another one uh, when we get to STEMCon and probably some other goodies, too, because I have some good ideas, I think, uh, in mind that I'm excited to share with everybody. Okay. So like I said, if you're watching this down the line, you have some questions or some troubleshooting that's not answered in the resource, you let me know. Uh, I'm happy to work through that with you. And I, you know, expect it to be a little, probably uncomfortable, a little bit for kids at the beginning. I modeled this after, you know, comedy improv, right? So where the audience shouts out, you know, a situation or a holiday or a reason you'd visit a friend or, you know, they have you put all those pieces together and then they just improvise a scene. I liked the idea of moving that into well, what would that look like for STEM, for a STEM class? And so if you've ever been to comedy improv, you know, sometimes you watch those scenes and it's like, great. And sometimes you watch them and it's like, oh, that one was kind of a stinker. That's fine. And that's actually kind of the attitude. Like, I hope that we can convey to students when we're doing this, that just like not to be super emotionally invested in the actual thing, but more invested in, you know, doing it. If that makes sense, like actually like not shutting down and like moving through the process and giving it a shot and giving it a try. And like I said, there are some different troubleshooting pieces in there for students that I think will be really helpful if they do run into some resistance or some trouble with it, because it's it's probably going to be very different from things they've done um, in general STEM classes or in general school before. And I've mentioned this at STEMCon before in past years, we have a very achievement oriented society. And so it's, it can be really difficult for kids to sort of code switch to understanding. It's not about the end product. It's about the process. And in this case, it's about practicing the process. So we can sort of flex that muscle and get to the point, hopefully, where we can summon creativity and imagination more easily. Because a lot of the time, the reason we can't do that, it's all mindset work. It's all just in our head, being afraid of not having a good idea or that our idea won't work. So... I hope you guys enjoy it and let me know how it's going. So I hope you're also having a great evening. I'm going to leave. I will see you uh, later, I'm sure. Bye for now.